Hi everyone, my name is Harshita Rai and my presentation is about vaping and why it has become a deadly epidemic among adolescents. I want to start off by introducing myself. I am a rising sophomore at Wyzetta High School in Plymouth, Minnesota. In school, I'm involved in the speech club and HOSA. Outside of school, I spend my time volunteering at hospitals and playing piano for seniors at nursing homes. Additionally, I'm an ambassador for an organization called Lurky Love, which aims to promote the well-being of abandoned girls in India. As an ambassador, my role is to raise funds and promote the organization. My interests lie in women's health and in the future, I hope to have a career in medicine. So here's the quick introduction to the topic at hand. In recent years, the rapid rise of teen nicotine vaping has been a deeply concerning issue. Even though the surge of nicotine vaping has leveled off since 2020, the numbers continue to be significantly high. Between July 2021 and June 2022, around 800,000 teens in the United States between the ages of 15 and 18 tried their first e-cigarette. Young people continue to use e-cigarettes at epidemic levels. However, this isn't only a problem in the United States, but is a prevalent public health concern worldwide. In Canada, the e-cigarette use rate reached 14.6% among adolescents in 2018 and 32.7% in the UK. Teens also aren't simply experimenting with e-cigarettes, but are instead using them on a daily basis, possibly without being educated on the long-term consequences. The tobacco industry strategically promotes its products to the youth through appealing advertisements on social media that promote flavors, make health claims, and push lifestyle benefits. Companies use these tactics on vulnerable teens to convince them to buy such substances. In this presentation, I will explain how e-cigarettes work, a detailed explanation of the science behind nicotine addiction, the short and long-term effects of e-cigarettes in adolescents, and a conclusion, including the responses to this epidemic. Vaping is the act of inhaling and exhaling the aerosol, also referred to as vapor, produced by e-cigarettes or similar devices. The aerosol consists of many chemicals and fine particles, many of which are toxic and dangerous and can seep into the lungs and bloodstream. E-cigarettes are available in many shapes and sizes, such as pen style, pods, jewel, etc. They usually include a battery that turns the device on, a heating element that heats the e-liquid, a cartridge that holds the e-liquid, and a mouthpiece used to inhale the aerosol. E-cigarettes do not contain tobacco, but many of them contain nicotine, which is a substance that comes from tobacco. Other chemicals in e-cigarettes are volatile organic compounds, toxic flavoring chemicals, heavy metals such as nickel, tin, and lead, and formaldehyde, which is a known cancer-causing substance. The FDA does not currently require testing of all the substances in e-cigarettes to ensure they're safe. Some products are also labeled incorrectly. It's important to note that the CDC has stated that sometimes e-cigarette products are changed or modified and can have possibly harmful or illegal substances. The science behind nicotine addiction is closely related to the reward system, which is one of the most primitive parts of the brain. E-cigarettes contain a highly addictive substance known as nicotine. When nicotine-laced vapor is inhaled, the substance is absorbed through the blood vessel linings. In about 10 seconds, it hijacks the brain's reward system, also known as the mesolimbic dopamine system. This reward system is meant for natural neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine, which is used to activate muscles in our bodies. However, nicotine fits into the acetylcholine receptor due to their similar shape. Once it binds to the receptor, the brain releases a neurotransmitter called dopamine, which aids in the creation of a feel-good emotion. Unlike other drugs though, nicotine leaves the body after being broken down by the liver. And once it's gone, the brain craves for it again. Nicotine is harmful at any age, but particularly dangerous before the brain is fully developed, since an adolescent's brain is significantly more sensitive to rewards. This eventually turns into an endless cycle that can be very difficult to break, especially for younger people. There are a variety of risks and consequences associated with e-cigarette use. Although e-cigarette aerosol appears less toxic than compounds inhaled during traditional e-cigarettes, they pose their own physical risks, especially on the respiratory system. E-cigarettes may potentially expose users to heavy metals from batteries and heating coils that may be carcinogenic 
or toxic to the heart and lungs. During the summer of 2019, North America underwent an outbreak of Ebola, which is a serious medical condition in which a person's lungs become damaged from substances contained in e-cigarettes and vaping products. The 2019 outbreak led to hundreds of hospitalizations and dozens of deaths. Vaping and ingesting e-liquids have been associated with seizures and have adversely impacted oral health. Secondhand e-cigarette vapor exposure may also pose a health risk and contaminate indoor air quality, although seemingly less than traditional cigarette smoke. The physical dangers are clearly critical, but there is also a correlation between e-cigarette use and mental health. Adults with mental illnesses suffer disproportionately from tobacco-related morbidity and mortality, and most begin smoking before age 21. This makes tobacco prevention in young people with mental illness an important priority. In a recent systematic review of vaping and mental health in youth, vaping has been consistently associated with depression, ADHD, and conduct disorders in adolescents. Nicotine use in adolescents interfered with natural brain development in key areas, leading to problems with learning and memory. Nicotine impairs development of the prefrontal cortex, which is the area of the brain responsible for decision-making, judgment, and planning. However, the vaping effects in a long-term trajectory still remain unclear. Youth vaping is now a well-studied phenomenon, and although vaping-specific treatments remain underdeveloped, there have been significant efforts to combat this issue. One example being the FDA denying authorization to market Juul products in June 2022. This action ensures that the FDA will be committed to ensuring that all e-cigarettes and electronic delivery system products currently being marketed to consumers meet public health standards. Many adolescents are also sharing their experiences. Seema Herman, an 18-year-old at the time, had a near-death experience due to three years of vaping, which made her realize the dangers of e-cigarettes. She decided to become an anti-vaping activist and works to discourage e-cigarette use and motivates users to quit. This is clearly such an important topic to be addressed and for adolescents to be educated about. And hopefully you also learn something meaningful from this presentation. These are some of my references. I used information from the CDC, the FDA, the National Institute of Drug Abuse, and a few other sources. Lastly, I would like to thank my family, the GHLC team for giving students this amazing platform and all of the listeners. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My email is on the screen. And thank you again for your time. Mm.